Perhaps the biggest new feature of Cubase 6 is multi-track audio quantization. It works really, really well on drum tracks because, let's face it, a lot of drummers don't work with a metronome very often, and even the ones that do can be very, very intimidated by the studio recording process if they don't do it very often. So as soon as you bring a drummer into your studio and tell them to follow a click track, sometimes they're just going to have trouble doing it. And when I learned that Cubase 6 could do this, I immediately thought of this project that I'm going to show you. This particular drummer was good, except that he just had trouble following the click track. So I've got the click track turned on right now, and let's get an idea of where the timing of his drums were originally. So I'm going to press play. We can hear the click track. He starts out pretty good. And then he just kind of gets excited and off bass. Still doing pretty good, but then whenever he changes patterns, things tend to fall apart. Oi. Okay, so now he's getting tighter even though uh, he was loose at the beginning of that. Let's see how he comes out of this pattern into the next one. Oh boy. So wouldn't it be great if we could tighten up all of those timing errors? And in Cubase 6, we can. And let me show you that process. The first thing that we'll need to do is put all of these tracks into a folder. So I'm going to click the top track, and I'm going to shift-click the bottom track, and then control click and select move selected tracks into new folder. That will make a brand new folder. I'm going to call it drums. And I'm going to change the color because to me drum tracks are always yellow. And then I'm going to choose three tracks with which I can determine a grid of timing. And so the good tracks to use are typically a bass drum, a snare drum, and then either a hi-hat track or an overhead track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the kick drum tracks, in fact this front kick drum microphone and I'm going to double click on the audio track and then under the hit points pull down menu I'm going to select edit hit points it's going to go through and analyze the hit points I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and show you what's going to happen I'm going to adjust the threshold control until just the bass drum notes are highlighted that selects a really solid grid with which I can tell Cubase to lock to. So I'm going to close that window and I'm going to do the same thing to the snare drum track. And let's zoom in and see what we're looking at here. I'm going to adjust the threshold until just the snare drum notes become selected. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the overhead on the right side of the drum set so that it is getting more of the hi-hat Let's zoom in here and see how we're doing. Yeah, those hi-hats are probably those loudest notes, so I'm going to set my threshold about there. And then I'm going to select this new feature called Group Editing, and that will allow me to edit all of the tracks inside of this group all at once. And that's an important new feature to use this new function of audio quantization. So I'm going to enable that group editing button and then I'm going to come over to the new quantize panel and open it by hitting this little carrot in the corner of the quantize window. This is the new quantize panel and you'll notice that it has given me a list of all of the tracks with which I analyzed the hit points. So the kick drum front track is first and I'm going to give it the highest priority. And then the snare drum comes next and it has the second highest priority. And finally the overhead right track is the third priority. And then I'm just gonna zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's actually gonna happen when I hit these uh, controls. I'm gonna hit the slice button. When I hit the slice button 
boom, it makes slices on all of those tracks that are inside the folder at the hit points that I defined during the hit point detection process. And so I haven't actually done any editing except for the slicing up of all of those audio tracks. Now I come down to the quantize window and I'm going to select a 16th note grid and it's going to be a hard quantize to start with so that you can really hear what's going on. So the next function that I hit is quantize. And when I hit quantize, watch what happens to the audio files in the project window. You'll notice that it moved them all to the proper measure, bar, and beat. Now this keeps the tracks all phase aligned, so they're not going to have audio artifacts after you quantize the audio tracks, except that I'm going to zoom in here really close, you'll notice that in moving the audio tracks, it's left gaps. And we don't want to have any audio gaps because we don't want dead air in between. So the last function is going to be hitting the crossfade button in the quantize panel. And when I do that, it puts crossfades at every single segment. That way I get smooth audio transitions. So now that I've done that, let's wind back and listen to how he sounds now. Now he was pretty good through here before. It wasn't until a little bit later when he started to kind of fall apart. Right about here he was starting to lose it. And especially after he moves from one pattern to another one. I'm going to zoom out here and fast forward a bit. Wow, that certainly sounds a lot better than it did before. So he's playing this pattern, which was all over the place before. And then he locked in again, but now he changes again. Remember how loose it was around measure 34? Now it's nice and solid. Let's listen to before. I'm going to hit undo a few times. See how far off he was? I'm going to hit redo a few times and get us back. So now he's nice and solid. But what if I don't want to do a hard quantization? I'm going to hit undo a few times to get us back to where we just had slices done, and I'm going to reopen the quantize control panel. Now I'm going to click on the IQ button, which is the iterative quantize on or off. When I click on that, I can set a strength for the quantize, so it's not going to move 100% accurately. It's going to move within a 60% margin to set that quantize. Now I'm going to hit the quantize button and the crossfade button again, and now what I end up with is a a looser, not perfect feel, but that will maintain some of the human element in the track. Let's take a listen. You can hear that it's not perfect. There's a little bit of looseness in there, but it definitely sounds more human. Now let me quickly talk a little bit more about the group editing button. With the group editing on, let's say that I went into one of the crossfades and I wanted to adjust one of the crossfades. You'll notice that when I do that with the group editing on, all of the crossfades follow. I'm going to hit undo a couple of times and I'm going to select just one segment. Now, with that one segment highlighted across all of those tracks, when I do any sort of editing on those slices, the edit follows with the group edit. If I turn the group editing off, then I can actually get individual control over any of the editing functions. So that's the group editing feature, and it works in concert with the new multi-track audio quantization feature.